All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Planning Commission meeting. Today's date is February 22nd, 2023, and the time is 9.39 a.m. I apologize for the late start this morning. We had some connectivity issues. Um, as everybody can see, today's meeting is completely remote via Zoom. And there are a couple of ways to participate in today's meeting. If your computer is equipped with a microphone, it is recommended that you participate via the Planning Commission Zoom meeting link, which is posted on the Planning Department's homepage at sccoplanning.com. Alternatively, if your computer is not equipped with a microphone, you may provide comment by telephone. The phone number is 669-444-9171. When prompted, please enter collaboration code 814-8152-8029. And this information is also posted on the Planning Department webpage. So today, during key points in the meeting, time will be provided for members of the public to provide their testimony. Speakers will be muted until called on to speak. I will ask participants who wish to provide testimony to either remotely raise your hand by selecting the hand icon on the Zoom link, or if calling in by telephone by remotely raising your hand by pressing star nine on your telephone. I will call on participants by either your name or the last four digits of your telephone number. If you are participating via the Zoom link, when I call on you to speak, you'll see a pop-up on your screen that says unmute. Please accept the pop-up, state your name for the record and provide your testimony. If calling in via telephone, you must unmute yourself by pressing star six. If at any time you have difficulty connecting to today's meeting via the Zoom link or you forget the phone number, um, please email our support staff, Nick Brown, at nicholas.brown at santacruzcounty.us. He is checking his email periodically throughout the meeting, and he will alert me that someone is trying to connect, and we'll take a quick break. All right, and with those instructions, I will turn it over to the Planning Commission Chair, Tim Gordon. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Jocelyn. Thank you. Thank you for that great intro and welcome back everyone to Planning Commission first one in 2023. Excited for a, a good year ahead of us and looking forward to um, some good meetings here. So we've got, we, can we go ahead and open up today's um, Planning Commission hearing with a roll call, Ms. Drake? Uh, yes, and I was just, uh, promoting Denise. It looks like she has been promoted. Okay, Commissioner Shepard. Uh, I'm here uh, now. I'm here. All right. Good I'm, morning. Getting I'm getting feedback. feedback. My um. Okay, Renee, you may want to try calling in. Um, but I did, I get, I got Renee for the, or Commissioner Shepard, sorry, for roll call. So I'll move on. And Commissioner Holbert? I think you are muted. <laughs> Here. Good morning, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, Commissioner Violante? Here. And Chair Gordon? Here. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Drake, I, agenda item two on our agenda was election of officers. I think we might have a little bit of transition there potentially. Um, what, how do we want to handle that? Um, I was going to recommend that the Planning Commission consider continuing this item or rescheduling it for the March hearing because we do currently have a vacant seat on the Planning Commission. Um, and also one of our commissioners was an, unable to participate today. So um, that was just a recommendation. I don't know if the Planning Commission would like to have discussion. Okay. Um, any discussion by any commissioners thoughts? Um, I'm sorry, but I'm getting huge reverb. Renee, are you by chance connected on two devices or? Um, that's usually it, actually. 
right? If you're commit, if you're connected on two devices, that can happen. You might need to mute on one, and that might solve it. Originally called uh, Renee, um, as she was logging in, and she was on uh, on the phone as well, logged in. So I think she can hang up and uh, just remain online on the computer on one device, and it should be successful now. Thank you, Nick. Okay, can you hear me now? Much better. Yes. Perfect. Unfortunately, I cannot hear you. Uh -oh. That's why I called in. Okay. Can, I can't hear what you're saying unless I call you back. Can Can we so take a quick I'm dead break in the water. to get this figured out and then come back? Okay. Yes. Um, let's just take a two minute uh, recess. I'll, I'll give uh, Commissioner Shepard a call. We'll have her call in. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we'll reconvene at 947. Thank you. Okay. 947. And let's see if we have Renee on. Doesn't appear so. We just want to hang tight, Miss Drake, till we see her name pop up and then reconvene. Um, we do have a quorum, so you can continue. Um, she is supposed to be calling in, so when she does, I'll promote her. Or, okay. or you can take a break, I think. Um, I think we could just go ahead and move on. I'm sure that we can get her in here in short order so she's Let's calling in right now yep okay okay great well here she is renee can you hear us now you might need to unmute Let's go ahead and just continue the conversation while she's getting that figured out. So we are, again, uh, just for clarity, we're on agenda item number two, election of officers and discussing whether or not we wanna postpone this um, agenda item till a later date. And uh, do any commissioners have any thoughts on that? Can you hear me? I think you just should do it next month. <laughs> I mean, there's only three of us yes. here, and I'm, yeah. this is my swan song here, so yeah. hey, I <laughs> don't think I should be voting on it. All right, if that's the case, and then we could use a motion on the item. Renee, just to clarify, yes, we can hear you if you have any thoughts on the item. 5912 is going to be the last one. She's on. Renee, can you hear us? I, mean, I don't disagree. Okay, I'll go since I, I just want to make sure Renee can hear us. But I, I don't disagree with um, Commissioner Holbert that we have one commissioner absent and um, another alternate present today, and apparently Commissioner uh, <laughs> um, Shepard having difficulty participating. Um, I, I feel like it'd be difficult to make a decision for a year-long seat with so um, so few of us present. Um, Agreed. I think that that makes the most sense to move this along and um, reconvene on this item on the next agenda. So I apologize to Commissioner Shepard, but yes, I agree with Commissioner Holbert. Um, um, I'd be happy to make a motion unless Commissioner Holbert, I see you've unmuted if you'd like to. Oh, um, well, I move that we uh, reconsider this in the March, March, do we have a March date? I think you can just say the next available meeting if you next want. Next available meeting. Um, okay. It looks right. like it's going to be March 8th. I second that motion. Great. We have a motion and a second. And um, Ms. Drake, can we do roll call vote on this, please? Yes. Commissioner Violante? Yes. Commissioner Holbert? Yes. And Chair Gordon? Yes. Thank you. And Renee, are you there? Can you hear us? Um, uh, Renee's having some connectivity issues with her audio. She um, she can't hear. She's telling me on the phone that she can't hear. 
Okay. I see or her. She, or she can hear, but she can't. She needs to be unmuted. I asked um, CTV staff to promote Renee to a panelist. She's calling in at 5912. Can we please promote her? Can we unmute her then and just leave her unmuted like we do when someone tries to make public comment for us then? Yes, I just asked her to unmute. Okay. Commissioner Shepard, if you'd like to just unmute yourself, pressing star six. We'll just have you unmute. Hello. Good morning, uh, Commissioner Shepard. I have heard um, you don't really need to postpone it. I, I can hear you now. There's something wrong that I can hear you, but you can't hear me without reverb on the computer. It never happened before, so I don't know why. Okay. We can hear you just fine now. Good. So let's proceed. Okay. So right. we're on item number three. Is that correct, Chair? Correct. Thank you. All right. We will move on. Additions and corrections to the agenda. Do we have any today, Ms. Drake? Uh, no, there are none. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, then at item number four, declaration of ex parte communications. Do I have any commissioners that have anything to declare today? Okay. No. Thank you. With that, we can move on to agenda item number five, oral communications. This is the time of the hearing where members of the public have the ability to speak on items that are not on today's agenda. Ms. Drake, do we have anyone that would like to speak today? Okay, and if we have callers who would like to make a comment on any um, subject not on today's agenda, please raise your hand by pressing star nine. And I am not seeing any chairs, so I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, great. Thank you. We can go ahead and close oral communications at this time. Um, and just want to thank the members that are of the public that are on today for um, being patient with us while we uh, clean the rust off, being gone for a little bit. So um, next agenda item, consent item uh, number six, AB 361 resolution. It's a resolution to continue virtual planning commission meetings um, in accordance with AB 361. And we'll be looking for a motion and a second on that. Um, can I ask a question? When are we going to have the option to um, resume live meetings? Uh, uh, Commissioner Shepard, uh, maybe I should jump in on that one. Uh, live meetings are essentially the mandatory rules starting in March. Um, there are some provisions that allow for remote meetings under certain exceptional circumstances, which we can discuss if those circumstances arise. But you should essentially assume that the old Brown Act rules about remote meetings are in effect, effective March, uh, and your meetings will be in person and live. Okay, so we're turning thanks. on March 8th. So this um, resolution is for the month of February, since we didn't meet in early February. I see. Okay. Okay, any other further questions? Hearing none, would any commissioner like to make a motion? I believe we need to go to public comment first. Did we do that? For consent items, we don't have public comment typically. I, I did, so apologize, I didn't know it was on consent. Yeah, sorry, this is consent agenda. <laughs> We can move it to public comment if desired, that someone could make a motion, but. Then I, I approve the recommended actions. I just didn't see it on consent. Okay, thank you. And so we have a second. Thank you, Commissioner Holbert. Appreciate that. Can we have a motion and a second? Can we please have a roll call vote, Ms. Drake? Commissioner Shepard? Yes. Commissioner Violante? Yes. Commissioner Holbert? Yes. And Chair Gordon? Yes. Thank you. 
Thank you, that passes. And we can move on to our uh, scheduled agenda items. Uh, the first one being approval of the minutes from December 14th planning commission hearing. And do any members of the commission have any questions or discussion on the minutes? Okay, hearing none. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a motion to approve the minutes from the December 14th hearing. I can't vote on it. I, I have to. Excuse Correct. Me. Yeah. Just a point of clarity, Jocelyn, for the rules that we operate under, can the chair make a motion in the PC? Or maybe that's a question to Justin. Yes. Oh, perfect. Yes, Thank you can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, nothing. Justin, it's, it's yeah, just, totally. It's, it's, yeah, it's, definitely it's, it's possible. It's, it's not often done because out of respect to let the other commissioners go forward, but that's possible. Yeah, in the in the board of supervisors, they can't. So I just wanted to clarify. For oh, those. gotcha. I didn't know that. Yeah. Still, still learning. <laughs> even yeah, good to two know. years, in, even two years yeah. in now. <laughs> yeah. Me too. So. Um, and then I would I second your motion, um, uh, Chair Gordon. Thank you, Ms. Drake. Could we have a roll call vote on that, please? All right, Can, uh, Commissioner Shepard. Yeah. Commissioner Violante. Yes. And Chair Gordon. Yes. And as Commissioner Holbert stated, she will abstain since she was not present. Okay. Okay, thank you. Moving right along now. Uh, we can move to agenda item number eight. This is application number 211192, located at 1000 Bonnie Dune Road and 443 Smith Grade Road. It's a proposal to transfer 100, approximately 105 acres to another parcel. Um, and rezone it to TP. Ms. Drake, do we have the uh, staff present for uh, presentation and the applicant available? Uh, we have Evan Dittmars uh, from the planning division with us to present on this item. Thank and you. if we could please load the PowerPoint for his item, that would be wonderful. Good morning, Evan. Good morning. Uh, just to clarify, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so good morning. Uh, my name is Evan Dittmars. I'm the project planner uh, for application 211192. Uh, the applicant is David Getchell of North Coast Remediation, and the owner is North Coast LLC. And next slide, please. Uh, both parcels are located in Bonnie Dune, uh, approximately 2.3 miles from the Highway 1 and Bonnie Dune Road intersections. The larger parcel is located at 1000 Bonnie Dune Road and spans eastward to Smith Grade. And the site totals 253 acres and was historically used as a limestone quarry, uh, but is presently used by Joby Aviation. Uh, the smaller parcel is northeast of the quarry parcel and takes access from Smith Grade. Uh, the site is presently vacant and has never been developed uh, but a timber harvest did occur in 1980. And next slide, please. So the large, uh, the larger parcel was last mined in 2010 and is currently in the reclamation process. The site is primarily zoned M3, which is mineral extraction industrial, uh, except for two portions of the property totaling uh, approximately 1.4 acres. Uh, which are zoned agricultural and residential agricultural. Um, the entirety of the project site, it does have a mountain residential general plan designation. And the eastern portion of the project site uh, was, uh, was not part of the mined area. And next slide, please. Uh, the smaller parcel is 48 acres. Uh, it's located on the north side of Smith Grade. It is zoned TP across the entirety of the parcel, TP being timber production zoning. And most of the site has a mountain residential general plan de designation, but there is a 0 0.05 acre portion of the site which has a rural residential general plan designation. Um, it is vacant, undeveloped, and as I mentioned, it was uh, last harvested um, in circa 1980. Next slide, please. So this proposed project uh, involves two approvals, uh, both of which are represented by the shaded area in the uh, graphic on the screen. 
the first approval is a lot line adjustment to transfer 105 acres from the quarry to the vacant timber parcel. Uh, following the lot line adjustment, the area of land transferred would be rezoned to timber production. And that would result in a quarry parcel uh, uh, reducing from 253 acres to 148 acres. And the TP parcel would grow from 48 acres to 153 acres. Next slide, please. So the first part of the approval is the lot line adjustment. And lot line adjustments do not typically require planning commission approval. The majority of lot line adjustment applications are processed administratively uh, as level three applications in the planning department. But planning staff felt that it was imperative to couple the lot line adjustment approval with the rezoning because although the proposal fully complies with our county lot line adjustment regulations, the resulting split zoning with half of the parcel zoned M3 and half of the parcel zoned for timber production would present a limited and complicated land use pattern. However, the split zoning is not precluded by, by county code. And when we're evaluating lot line adjustments, a big part of the discussion is centered around minimum parcel sizes. And the minimum parcel size for an M3 parcel is described as the minimum economic unit required for mineral extraction. And given that there is no mineral extraction occurring at the site now or in the future, uh, the parcel does not have a, a minimum parcel size. Next slide, please. The second to the lot line adjustment would be to rezone the shaded area uh, in the graphic to match timber production zoning of the adjacent parcel. This type of adjacency rezoning is facilitated by government code, which allows a parcel which is not zoned TP but is contiguous with and under the same ownership as a TP zoned parcel to be rezoned to TP and the two parcels managed as one forest unit. Among the short list of requirements to qualify for this type of zoning, the applicant needs to provide a plan prepared by a forester, uh, the parcel needs to meet a minimum stocking standard, and the existing uses on the parcel must be compatible with the uses allowed in the TP zone district. Now, importantly about this government code section is that it also expressly prohibits a jurisdiction from placing additional requirements on an application for a timber production adjacency rezoning. Next slide, please. Some additional considerations on this project are detailed here. Uh, the lot line adjustment is categorically exempt from environmental review under the California Environmental Quality Act, and the rezoning to TP is statutorily exempt. Uh, the second note is that future uses that are not proposed on this application on either parcel, uh, including the remaining quarry parcel, would be independent of this application and subject to their own discretionary review. And this approval does not authorize any development beyond the rezoning. And finally, the basis of this application is the acknowledgement that the site does not have a future as a mineral extraction industrial parcel. The quarry is decommissioned and under reclamation. The county code does not provide explicit direction for the succession of zoning from a decommissioned quarry, but this proposed application um, is supported by staff and that's a reasonable and practical use of the non-mined portion of the site. Next slide, please. Therefore, the recommended actions uh, for your commission to take are to adopt the attached resolution, which is exhibit G of the staff report, sending a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors for approval of application 211192 and to adopt the ordinance rezoning the property to timber production. And that ordinance is exhibit H. And next slide, please. That concludes my presentation and I am available for questions.
Great, thank you, Mr. Dittmars. I appreciate it. I'm reminded at how well your team all does, uh, takes complicated things and makes them easy to understand for us. So I really appreciate that. Um, do any members of the commission have any questions for Mr. Dittmars at this time? Yes, Commissioner Holbert. I believe you're muted there, Commissioner Holbert. I have a question about your, he, the, the, the applicant is able to do that this because he owns both parcels. So I'm just interested in in the future if he can he sell off one parcel. I mean, does it all have to be under one owner, or it's just the first time that you do this? Yeah, it it should be um, retained under one ownership. It is retained under um, one ownership currently, um, but there is nothing in the code that can allow us to requirement that it be retained that way. Once the lot line adjustment is completed, it will be one parcel and it cannot be split and sold off again. So okay. the, um, the approval of the lot line adjustment will create one parcel um, and it won't be able to be further subdivided for a number of reasons, including um, our, our subdivision regulations for timber production parcels. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Violante. Yeah, Mr. Dittmars, I wonder if you can talk about the, the adjacency here, because I know that's a key component of the rezoning. And I, I, I don't wanna make assumptions about the intention of the code, um, but I, I'm hoping you can speak, I assume, that the reason for the adjacency regulation has to do with the, the, the minimization of impacts of the, the timber production um, by allowing these parcels to be joined. But I noticed that the, the adjacency here is, I think it's about 200 feet. Um, and, it, and it also crosses a, a, a county roadway. And so I'm wondering if perhaps you could speak to what the regulations consider adjacency and the intention there and our um, leeway or or if there is any, or if it's something that because it's adjacent, it's adjacent. If you could just speak to those. I know it's a kind of a lot sure. of questions, but if you could speak to that, that'd be helpful. Um, no, I, I agree. I, I can't speak to the intention of the code, but um, in, in this government code section, they do define contiguous. Um, and that it's defined as two or more parcels of land that are adjoining or neighboring or are sufficiently near to each other as determined by the board or council that they are manageable as one forest unit. Um, so there isn't uh, a requirement that they are, you know, don't have a separation such as, uh, such as a roadway, which they do have. Um, they are just separated by, by a narrow roadway. Um, and I, I can't speak for, for the intention of that code, but the forester's letter supports this proposal as um, the two parcels capable of being managed uh, as one unit. I'm sorry, you said that they determined as adjacency by, I'm sorry, what type of council can you, I'm sorry, I, mean, I didn't catch that. Yeah, uh, sorry. Um, it simply says as determined by the Border Council, which would be, um, which I believe would just uh, be the Planning Commission itself in this case. This is this is referenced directly from the Government Code section. Um, so are you telling me then that the Planning Commission has the authority to determine that these parcels are not adjacent? Yes, and actually there is clarification. Board means the Board of Supervisors of a county or city and county, whether general law or chartered, which establishes or proposes to establish timberland production zone pursuant to this chapter. So I believe the interpretation we can ask county council to weigh in that the board can make the determination that these two parcels are sufficiently near to each other um, to be managed as a single forest unit. Can I ask a question? Do you mind if I just I just finished my my train of thought real quick, Commissioner Shepard? Um, Remember, I I'm on the phone, so I can't don't have any sense of anything. Go ahead. 
No, no problem. I just, and, and perhaps council could weigh in here because I, I was under the impression that this was not something, so this would be really helpful for my clarity. I thought the code was pretty strict here. So perhaps Mr. Graham could weigh in um, that is, is it within the, the planning commission's authority or is it simply within the board's authority to determine adjacency? I, I was under the impression that, that if they touched and if it was determined by a forester, they could be managed as one. This was kind of not within our authority to determine this definition. And so it would be helpful for me if someone could provide that clarity um, because this, this is new information for me. It, this differs from my impression from the staff report. Yeah, and I did want to clarify the parcels do physically touch. Yes, there, I, is, yes. there, there is a um, a road barrier between the the two parcels, but it's, it's Smith Grade isn't isn't very wide at all. I mean, you can um, you can easily quickly walk across that that road. Um, but yeah, if Justin want, would like to to weigh in about um, the approving body, and this this is. Um, in reference to a government code section 51104. Admittedly, this is a somewhat new code section for me, but uh, it appears under the government code that it does, uh, 51104B actually does it best. The board of, or council, which apparently was delegated to the planning commission here, the authority to determine that something is manageable by as a single forest unit, which is a prerequisite to uh to the lot line adjustment that's being proposed and 51113.5 also talks about a petition which also would suggest that there is some degree of discretion vested in the approving body okay thank you i appreciate that i, I may have i'm going to sit with this this is new um i may have additional questions i thank you commissioner shepherd I'm, I'm done with my line of questions for now thank you Commissioner Shepard? Um, I really didn't have any questions. I'm just saying when the TP zoning laws changed some time ago, we saw dozens of these. Um, so I know it, it's something we haven't looked at before, but I've certainly seen a lot of these uh, requests in, in the past, and this seems to fall into the same uh, Scope as lots that we have that the planning commission has approved over time um, when we change TP zoning rules. So I I would like to uh, proceed to the public hearing if there's no other questions. Okay, thank you for that. Um, good to know some history there. I appreciate that. Um, I had a couple of just thoughts and one question, one thought. Is is this going to the board? It it is correct. Okay, so we're making a recommendation. Yeah, okay. Um, that's good to know. And then just, you know, can't say the intent of this law in particular, but a lot of new housing laws in particular consider parcels contiguous, even if they are across streets. And so I think that's something that we kind of see often. So I, I personally am not concerned about that um, in this case either, so. Any other questions or comments, or we can go ahead and move on to, um, well, actually, let me start there. Any questions or comments from the commissioners or staff? I think we got them all. Great. Um, Ms. Drake, is the applicant available today, or and or do they have a presentation that they'd like to do or give, or are we going to move to public comment directly? Um. The applicant is David Getchell. I see he's, he's okay. present. Okay. Yes, I see David's hand is raised. Good morning, David. Please unmute yourself and state your name for the record. You have I 10 minutes. Unmuted. Can everybody hear me? Yes, good morning. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, my name is David Getchell. Um, I'm the owner's rep for this project and really all of the North Coast LLC lands. Um, and uh, thanks so much for getting us on the agenda today. And I don't have a big um, presentation, but I am available for any questions you have. I would like to state just for the previous discussion, um, as a matter of clarification, um, the division between the two parcels we're speaking of 
is actually not divided by Smith Grade Road. Smith Grade Road goes through the upper, we call it the northeast section of a small portion of the large parcel we're talking about. And the parcels actually do touch um, north of Smith Grade Road for, I don't have the footage down here, but it's two to 300 feet, something like that, but they actually do touch. So technically they're not divided by Smith Grade Road, just to, as a point of clarification. And I think on the map, um, I think you may have all got um, a large format map um, printed that it's kind of easy to see that section. Um, so I guess I would ask if anybody has any questions about that particular um, point and I'm open for that or any other questions anybody has. Wonderful, thank you, Mr. Getz, I'll appreciate that. And I just pulled up the big map that we have and I do see what you're talking about. So I appreciate that clarification and um, any other, do any other commissioners have questions for Mr. Getchell before we move on to public hearing? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and open up the public uh, comment portion of this um, agenda item. Ms. Drake, do we have any other, or any of the members of the public that would like to speak? Okay, <clears throat> so if you would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand by pressing star nine on your telephone or using the hand icon on the Zoom app. I am not seeing any, Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, great. Then we can go ahead and close the public comment at this time and bring this back to the commission for deliberation. Do any commissioners have any further discussion or questions that they'd like to start with? Uh, I don't have any questions, and just to move it along, I will um, put a motion on the table to approve staff recommendation. This seems in line with zoning and the state board's forestry intentions. Uh, it's obviously forest land. There's no mineral extraction. It seems reasonable to have it be securely in a timber zone where it will be managed well. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Shepard. We do have a motion and we second. look, okay. Commissioner Olbert, we have a motion and a second. Uh, do we have any discussion before we move to a vote? I, I actually have a, a note to make before a, a vote is made. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that's out of procedure here. Well, let's, let's hear it and then we'll figure okay. out what the procedure um, is. <laughs> The, the applicant did raise uh, an issue with uh, one of the conditions of approval that was placed on uh, the staff report. It's on page 11 of the staff report. It's condition of approval four. Um, the condition of approval requires them to record a declaration of restriction, uh, acknowledging the parcel's non-buildability. Um, this is a standard format for us to record as a lot line adjustment when a parcel's buildability has not been established. Um, they are concerned that this conveys that the parcel to never be buildable uh, in perpetuity. And that is not the intention of that declaration. Um, the um, format for that declaration acknowledges that is deemed unbuildable until uh, the required technical studies are presented to to establish the buildability. Um, and so he requested some clarification on the staff report and we are amenable to to just um, extrapolating on that condition to add um, to add a sentence at the end of that uh, condition for to say that the declaration shall remain on title until such a time that technical studies are submitted and buildability established um, and that the condition is not intended to preclude the site from any development. And this um, gives the, this does not uh, foreclose the opportunity for development that would otherwise be allowed on a timber production parcel. Well, okay. um, I, my comment is it's very unusual. The applicant had an had opportunity Put this forward and generally speaking if you want a change or 
a modification to what you're proposing, that time to bring it up is before the Planning Commission. I want to ask County Council if he's really going to start bringing up applicants' objections to every proposal on their behalf. I mean, if that's the applicant needs to say that, if that's what a change he wanted. Commissioner Shepard, was that a question if I'm bringing up applicants' yeah. objections? Yeah. Do you, do you, you, Commissioner Shepard, you might not be able to see this, but that was Mr. Dittmars that brought, that brought that up, the planner. Correct. I, I'm sorry. I, I know you you um, don't have visual aid here, but yeah, I'm, I'm Evan Dittmars. I'm the project planner. And this okay. was something that the um, that the applicant did ask me to um, to address, and I, I did not bring that up in the in the end of my presentation. And I wanted to clarify it before a vote um, oh, was made by your commission. Uh, I apologize. No, I can't. I am not looking, seeing anything. Um, if this is the standard language we've applied to many, many other parcels asking for a lot of adjustments to be included in TPC, I would be hesitant about adding it to this one. Um, if you're saying that that is the way the law works, then they could find that out at the time, at such time as they wanted uh, to think about looking at those technical studies, but I don't. Are you sure you really want to agree, um, advocate making new language for this application when we've never done it on other applications? And besides, um, if they inquired, they could find out that what you just said is the case? It, this is not typically included as part of the timber production rezoning. It's more part of our lot line adjustment uh, applications. This is something that we can either make a buildability determination before we adjust the parcel boundaries, or we can reserve that determination to a future date. Um, for example, if the applicant hasn't um, prepared the technical studies, geology, or the septic suitability for a site, um, they can basically defer that in the future. But we require a deed restriction to acknowledge that just because we are adjusting the parcel boundaries, we are not uh, certi certifying the, the parcel suitable for development. And in this case, um, that determination has not been made and um, our um, code would say to make, the, uh, to make that declaration. Um, it's noted in the findings for the lot line adjustment. Um, and as I mentioned, this, this ability to provide technical studies and rescind the declaration is described in the format of the declaration of restriction. Um, but the applicant's concern was that the plain text read of condition four uh, makes it sound like we are determining this parcel to be non-buildable in perpetuity. And um, he did but say at a minute. Um, but if they came into the planning department and said, what about this? You would say what you have just um, just stated. And beside it, while it's in TPZ, it's not buildable anyway. So I don't, I don't see why we should change the way you've always done it. There, there is some potential for buildability on TP parcels. It's very limited. It has to be consistent with, um, with the timber production operation, which is going to be the primary use of the site. But there are ancillary uses allowed. Um, and again, the interest of the owner was to, um, to ensure that they do not condemn the site to uh, perpetual non-buildability. Um, any forester worth his salt would be able to make sure that the owner knew that. That's part of the management practice. I just no, don't see me. Uh, I'm sorry. not going to put in I'm your sorry, way. Could... I don't care. Whatever other commissioners feel is fine. I have a, just a comment. Yeah, Commissioner Holbert. I just assume leave it the way it is. It, um, if it if we're worried about what's going to happen here, I would have liked a lot more. Uh, not, uh, I would like to know a lot more about what they're thinking about. So it just seems um, that we would have needed more information about what kinds of uses they were going to use and how and uh, or use it for and what kind of building and so forth. So I don't see any reason for changing it. I think there should have been more work done if that's what they wanted. 
understand. Thank you for that input. And that is, you know, the direction from the motion in the second or so. Um, Commissioner Violante, did you have any discussion on this before we move to a vote? I mean, it sounds to me like both the maker of the motion and the second are unwilling. I recall it. I understand, you know, Mr. Dittmar's willingness to accommodate the applicant. Um, but it sounds like even his recommendation wouldn't change the intent. And so we have a motion and the second, neither of which are willing to incorporate this. So I, I think that's where we're at. And so we should. Yeah. Okay. Understand. Um, I appreciate that. I did have one just clarifying question to, to kind of put it together in my own head. So <clears throat> I have in the few, this is regarding the lot line split, right? Not the TP zone. That's what you said, not the reason, excuse me. And Correct. so what you're saying is that this means that the new parcel added to the old parcel hasn't been studied for buildability as to what is required under the TP zoning. So right. we can't guarantee that whatever the code currently says will apply as far as development activity. So that makes total sense to me. Um, is there any way to, and maybe not for this one, because the, the, you know, I wouldn't be the one that changing the motion necessarily, but is there any way to adjust it to where that restriction is only on the new proposed added portion of land as opposed to the entire parcel? Or does it run, it's a deed restriction that runs with like the APN and you can't do anything about that. Right, the lot line adjustment will create one, will create one parcel. So it is gonna be on the deed for the one parcel. Okay. It's okay. it's okay the way it's worded, I think. Yeah, okay, understood. Thank you. I just wanted to, to know that. And just from out of principle, I totally understand conditions of approval are tricky. And uh, from an applicant side, it's hard to, you don't have a lot of time often to like think about or understand how those could get changed. And so on a case-by-case -case basis, I do see the need at times to adjust them in the planning commission hearing. So I'm definitely not opposed to that out of principle. Um, but I agree on this one that if we haven't done the studies, we can't go forward and say that it's, you know, buildable in some other way. Um, that would be putting us at risk as a county for approving something, in my opinion, that maybe we didn't study. And I, I don't want to put us in that position. So um, thank you for letting me think through that. Um, if there's any other comments, I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, we can move to a roll call vote on the matter. Okay, hearing none, Ms. Drake, can we please have a roll call vote on this item? Yes, uh, Commissioner Holbert? Yes. Commissioner Shepard? Commissioner Shepard? I think she went back into the. Oh, I don't see her here anymore. She's still, her? she's still on the attendee list. Her computer was on, but her. Uh, I think she was speaking through the phone, and I don't see her cell phone here anymore. Oh, I do. Right. She's mm -hmm. back on the attendee. There she mm -hmm. is. Five nine one two. Yeah. Thanks, Commissioner Shepard. <clears throat> Oh. Star six again, Renee, if you can hear us. Uh, how about Commissioner Violante? Yes. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, Commissioner Shepard, yay or nay? Uh, yay, and somebody muted me. I didn't mute myself. Sorry. And Chair Gordon? Yes. <laughs> Did we get everybody? <laughs> yes. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Oh man, we're real rusty. <laughs> we're <laughs> we're going to get this. Um, okay. With that, we can close agenda item number eight. Thank you, Evan. And move on to um, regular agenda items. Agenda item number nine, planning director's report. Do we have a report today? Mr. Machado, hello, how are you? Yeah, good morning. Thank you, Chair Gordon. Yes, I uh, actually asked Stephanie Hansen to provide a quick update on our housing element. So Stephanie, I'll give it. I'll give the mic to you. Thanks, Matt. Hi, everybody. Um, we are um, feverishly engaged in the um, uh, housing element update. Um, we need to 
accomplish a lot in a pretty short timeline. The updates being run out of our policy division with support by our um, our house policy section with support from the housing section. Um, in December, we released an RFP to seek technical assistance um, and uh, with from a consultant with expertise in housing elements and also in um, public engagement. Um, we visited the board uh, back when we visited the planning commission on this, but we heard from the board um, that they wanted a kind of a specific type of public engagement for this, um, one that's more intensive um, and in, involves um, more uh, outreach so that you kind of create a citizens group of um, folks who are representational of uh, the county's demographics. Um, so we're engaging in that process. We're actually doing a two-pronged approach on public engagement. One is to create a stakeholders group um, of people who have an interest in housing in the county, um, develop, you know, in terms of developing housing um, or are with an organization that um, promotes uh, uh, housing or is an affordable housing developer kind of thing, um, real estate agents, and so forth. And then the the other piece is the um, citizens panel um, that will reflect those um, uh, the county demographics. And so that outreach is starting right away. It might take a little bit. Um, but then we'll be heading into a series of meetings for those two groups and then community meetings afterward. Um, we're, we're also looking at the schedule again. Um, we think there may be benefit to releasing um, a, a draft um, in the summer um, because there are guidelines and requirements that it be a public document before the initial draft goes to the state housing community development department. Um, and we're um, taking a close look to make sure that we can um, adopt the housing element on time in December. So it's a big, big lift for that, those two groups, um, but we're, we're working on it. So that's, that's the update for that one. And that completes our report today. Thank you, Chair and Commissioners. Okay. But Great. any questions if you have them? Thank you. Uh, a lot of work coming up. Looking forward to helping out however we can. So um, any other commissioners have questions on that? No? OK. All right. We can go ahead and move on. Uh, report on upcoming meeting dates and agendas. Ms. Drake, do we have any reports there? Um, yes, so the next regularly scheduled meeting is March 8th, and we have two reservation forms for that meeting date, so it looks like you will be meeting. We have a land division application and the general plan annual update scheduled, um, and as we mentioned earlier, that meeting will be in the chambers. Um, and we are going to retain a call in feature so that members of the public can call in with comments, but it will not be a zoom meeting. It will be a live in person meeting with a call in component. So that's exciting. Um, could be a few, um, a, a new little bit of a learning curve for us, um, returning to the chambers. Um, so we've been doing a lot of testing and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's face again and being all together in one room. Um, and I do believe we have some reservation forms for the um, second meeting as, in March as well. Um, so it looks like we'll be meeting both times in March so far, but definitely on the 8th. And that is all I have. Great. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. I haven't been in the chambers yet. <laughs> I mean, I was like a commissioner, you know, an applicant a long time ago, but you know. um, yeah, um, you may have already uh, answered this when I was um, dealing with trying to get in, but um, when do we elect new officers? Will that be at that meeting? I will put it on the agenda um, for March 8th. Okay, and just so, or, I mean, the practice has been before to just rotate. Correct. However, the next um, appointee in the rotation would, be, would have been uh, Commissioner Dan. And that is going to be a newly appointed position, I believe. So 
Well, the then I commission. think all due respect to whoever takes it, we ought to just do what we've done in the past, which is give them a, a pass for a year. Well, doesn't yeah. it, isn't it going to be Some, the, that goes by district? Oh, oh. Right. So I maybe just we jump should... in and say that this is something that's been moved to the next agenda. Yeah. Thank you. I was just going to say that. <laughs> Thank you. So um, we can have a discussion on it on March 8th. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, then last thing on today's agenda is the county council's report. Do we have a report today, Mr. Graham? Uh, nothing to report. We already discussed AB 394 uh, going away. Um, so uh, we will see. Uh, yeah, sorry, 364. And uh, we'll see you all in March. Wonderful. Great. We did it. Made it through. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. And um, with that, we can go ahead and close today's planning commission hearing and we will see you in March.